you so much for, I think, uh, I think it's a good start, start then. So thank you so much for inviting me to give this talk. Uh, well, of course, it would be much desirable to meet in person and I come to Cambridge, but the conditions didn't allow. Uh, but I am still very really, uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk about my research, also meet you digitally. Uh, so I would like to, okay. <laughs> so I would like to talk about, uh, about myself. So uh, a little bit. So I am a lecturer in the Center for Robotics Research, but be before that I was a postdoctoral researcher at the Computer Laboratory, and I, I think it's very close to uh, Nokia Bell Labs. And I, I think we have already met maybe during the lunch break uh, in the cafeteria next to your building. And also I participated in many events organized by your lab while I was in Cambridge. So in the uh, Center for Robotics Research, it is a, a very big um, group, and there are six academics and many researchers, and they are uh, focusing on we are focusing on most aspects of robotics. Uh, so, for example, manipulation tech technologies for agriculture, and uh, uh, for example, manufacturing, but also some applications like processing. Uh, devices and rehabilitation equipment, also uh, developing metamorphic robotic systems that are flexible and many more. Uh, but um, so, but uh, so in the uh, in this as this uh, research group, I am developing my own research group, uh, which is a social AI and a robotics lab. And uh, these are the main uh, areas that I am focusing on, and in particular, it's also. Uh, highly aligned with my uh, previous uh, research experience and also current research interests. And in particular, I am interested in understanding human behavior, for instance, given a video or combining with other uh, modalities, how we can understand human actions and activities from uh, data, and also, for instance, how we can interpret this information at a higher level. So uh, extract some higher level information, for instance, their emotions, personality, engagement status. And then once we have obtained these uh, multimodal representations of human behavior, how this can be integrated into the uh, real systems such as robots, into the uh, learning, perception, and control of these systems. And for instance, how robots can uh, generate behaviors, which is, uh, which is natural, and how they can imitate human behaviors to enable harmonious human robot interaction and of course the goal is to uh, develop robotic systems that are human oriented and human inspired that they can learn from humans and they can uh, naturally interact with humans in uh, real life applications so however in this talk i am going to talk about a bit of my past uh, research uh, particularly focusing on visual analysis of group interactions, and then also our ongoing work in this area. So I will start with theoretic interactions, and then I will talk about theoretic interactions, and then uh, I will continue with groups with a uh, varying number of members. And I will show how this kind of analysis of group interactions can be used, for example, diagnostic uh, tools, also learning analytics tools, but also maybe making robots to navigate in crowded social spaces. So uh, first of all, a, a little bit uh, background, one of the things uh, that uh, we are very much interested in is the nonverbal behaviors. For instance, here you can see examples from human-human interactions. So humans, when they interact with others, uh, in addition to spoken words, they display body language. Uh, they use uh, body language to communicate messages and intentions. For example, we, when we are collaborating with someone, we follow their uh, attention and then we also uh, generate similar behaviors. We display gestures, we display facial expressions. And of course, if you are going to use machines in human environments, we want them to also have similar capabilities uh, to uh, achieve success in uh, applications involving uh, human machine interactions. But also this information, for example, nonverbal behaviors give away information about some higher level of uh, information, such as uh, they give information about our personality engagement and maybe mental states, which can be also used <clears throat> to make missions, also to adapt uh, behaviors and then personalized uh, behaviors, generate personalized behaviors 
uh, which is personalized to the adapt to the user states and profiles. So one of the things that we have focused on is, for instance, whether it is possible to predict uh, personality from video sequences. The idea here, for instance, there are already some research in personality in the, in the psychology domain that human uh, behavior, human personality can be measured uh, with respect to five broad categories, which are uh, as can be shown on the slide, openness, conscientiousness, and extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And uh, there is also, it is possible to measure uh, someone's personality by asking them just to fill in a questionnaire. And then we can use this questionnaire responses to develop, uh, train machine learning methods to predict personality. But also in addition to personality analysis, it is also very attractive a lot of interaction, uh, attention that how we can also generate personality for machines because it is important when we are going to use uh, raw machines in uh, human robot interaction uh, applications. So we would like to enhance the quality of uh, human experience. Uh, for instance, there are some studies showing that in a human robot interaction scenarios, people are, they, they prefer, uh, for example, uh, interacting with robots that have a similar personality, but there are some other studies that focused on virtual agents and they found that people prefer a uh, virtual agent which has a uh, non-matching personality. So what we have done uh, in this uh, area particularly is, as I said, just focusing on observable non-verbal behaviors. Is it possible to, uh, from these non-verbal behaviors, it's possible to predict personality of an individual? And we focused on different uh, scenarios. For instance, we focused on when a person is interacting with a virtual agent, but also we focus on other scenarios when uh, multiple people are interacting with the robot, as well as we focused on robotic telepresence scenario. For instance, when a person is communicating with another person, not in a person, but using a robot. So this is one study that we have developed, one system that we have developed, which is called Metrates. As you can see here, as I said, here is a person. Uh, the idea is to predict the personality of a person while they are interacting with a virtual agent. And we want to, for instance, it would be useful, for instance, we would like to also uh, generate a, a appropriate nonverbal behavior cues based on the user's personality or even a person for the agent to enhance the user experience. And we here focus on particularly real-time personality prediction and differently from other works, we focus the time continuous uh, model and we investigated several features, focusing on facial features and also some holistic body features and audio features. And we uh, developed several techniques, for instance, one model that is not taking into account the temporal relationship be between these features, but also some other features which are modeling the temporal relationship between these features. So for instance, here the map trace system is uh, in action. As you can see, uh, one of the things that we found is temporal uh, relationships are important. Uh, the model that relies on the temporal relationship uh, was much more successful in creating the, the personality of the person when they are interacting with the agent. But also we investigated, for example, uh, whether um, which, useful, which feature is useful for a specific certain personality trait. For example, body features combined with OD is useful for predicting consciousness conscientiousness, but also, for instance, facial landmarks in general, combining with audio was much more successful approach to predict the personality traits in general. So this is also another application of uh, personality prediction. In this particular study, again, we designed an experiment. This time, there were two people, they were interacting with a humanoid robot. So of course here, the people they have participants, they have their own personality, but also robots also ex exhibited different personality types, either extroverted and introverted uh, personality. For example, the extroverted robot was really uh, energetic and speaking loudly, but in the uh, other robot, introverted robot was a bit shy and it was um, less energetic. And particularly we investigated whether can we, in this scenario, can we, 
uh, predict personality. Also, if personality has an impact on the engagement status of the participants. And again, this is an interaction scenario. Therefore, we uh, extracted two categories of features. So we focused on individual features, but also interpersonal features. For instance, visual focus of attention, how much the uh, a human participant looking at their human partner, but as well as how much they are looking at the robot and how it's useful to predict personality as well as the engagement status. And one of the things that we also uh, investigated is, uh, for instance, is it possible to uh, detect using uh, engagement using automatically predicted labels? And we found that actually the model was uh, these useful features were useful to detect uh, personality reliably enough to uh, also uh, predict the engagement. And other findings that we have found is uh, actually the personality really uh, played an important role uh, in this scenario to predict the engagement status of the human participants. But also one interesting outcome was also it was much easier to detect uh, the personality of extroverted, uh, the engagement status of the extroverted people. Perhaps maybe they display more gestures and their behaviors are much more uh, uh, visible and it was uh, much easier to detect whether they are engaged or disengaged. So, so far I have talked about how we can uh, predict a personality uh, in dyadic interaction settings or multi-party interaction settings with a robot, but also uh, analyzing the dyadic interactions also can give information about the um, developmental disorders like autism. Because uh, this, uh, like autism, like developmental uh, disorders like autism, they are strongly associated with the impairment in the understanding and the generation of social communication cues. And then in this particular scenario, uh, my collaborator, Alexandra, she conducted this study and we particularly focused on three interaction groups. For instance, the first group is two typical people are interacting and the other one, one typical person and uh, another person with autism is interacting and then another one, two people are uh, autism are interacting. And the goal is here whether we would like to investigate by just looking at the dyadic interaction dynamics, these nonverbal cues generated during this interaction, is it possible to identify if someone has autism or not, but also whether it is possible to identify these different interaction groups. So this is an ongoing study, but so far we focused on again by the pause uh, and also mutual attention features in particular, we investigated whether the relationship between the uh, correlation, shift, uh, correlation and relationship between the body posture uh, is, uh, can be used to detect uh, this autism, but also the group interaction type, also the, how much they are looking at each other can be used uh, for this uh, purpose. And our uh, preliminary results uh, show that actually the the, even these uh, simple features, they were uh, successful enough to predict who has autism in this interaction concept, but also it was useful to detect the dyadic interaction type. And it also shows that this non-verbal uh, cues generated during the dyadic interactions uh, can be used maybe to identify biomarkers uh, to develop uh, diagnosis tools. Okay, so, so far I have presented some of uh, our works uh, in the area of uh, data interactions, but also, also with, uh, for example, interactions with machines, but also for detecting some uh, developmental disorders. But we also investigated interactions in uh, collaborative problem uh, solving scenarios. So why collaborative problem solving scenarios? Because uh, many of the uh, workplace environments requires teamwork, for instance, in an operation room, the success is highly depends on the coordination of the nonverbal behaviors of the uh, team members. And also, but we are much more interested in also uh, the uh, applications of collaborative problem solving in an education context, because it is also a good uh, pedagogical approach because it helps students to develop critical thinking and interpersonal skills. But to be able to, 
to be able to support us to uh, successful uh, in this to benefit from this kind of uh, applications, uh, it is very important they are engaged with these applications. But it is uh, generally it is very hard for a teacher to investigate, observe each of the students given the large number of students uh, in a class. It is very hard for a teacher to investigate each student individually and then give them feedback. So uh, one option could be to whether can we uh, analyze student interactions based on videos and which can be, for instance, can be used to develop learning analytic tools which can help and support teachers and they can also design and uh, uh, appropriate intervention techniques. Also, uh, in addition, it can be useful, for instance, for robotic tutors. So there is already some work going on this area, but one of the limitations of the previous work, they are using invasive techniques to collect data from students. For example, they are uh, asking students to wear eye trackers or variable sensors to, for example, to measure electrodermal activity. But even if they don't use, they, if they rely on video data, they are focusing on uh, dyadic, uh, again, peer, uh, pairs instead of multiple students. And also they are usually uh, doing in a semi-automatic manner. So they are manually annotating this kind of non-verbal behavior cues to estimate the student engagement in this scenario. So in our work, we exclusively, we want to develop a fully automatic method that's exclusively focusing on visual cues and uh, looking at the uh, collaboration uh, of the students and their interaction dynamics, whether it is possible to, for instance, the uh, estimate engagement uh, status of the students, as you can see uh, in these pictures here. And uh, again, this is a data set which is developed uh, by my collaborator, Mutlo. And here you can see that uh, there are two students, they are interacting and they are working on a table and they are building a board and uh, uh, they are building and they are interacting and they are exchanging a lot of uh, nonverbal uh, behaviors cues uh, between each other to achieve a common goal. And we uh, aim at to predict a student's engagement status with respect to three categories. For instance, active, where the student is actively manipulating an object on the table, but also same active the student is not uh, physically active, but they are still attentive to their the friend or the board, also the passive uh, refers to any other uh, station. Uh, of course, uh, so using vision techniques to enable uh, student engagement prediction is a very attractive, but it's a very challenging from problem from a computer vision perspective. First of all, as you can see, uh, the uh, students are uh, moving. So the camera is fixed and students are moving and they are not uh, in the frame at, uh, all the time. They are going and then entering, and most of the time, students are partially observable, and the background is cluttered. For example, there are, as you can see, there are some people, maybe they are teacher or some other people uh, that are not contributing to the collaborative work, but they are picked up by the computer vision technique uh, models uh, in, detected by the models. So we need to eliminate this kind of stations and also another difficulty is the uh, the distribution of the data is not balanced for instance we have a lot of samples from the active category but we have less samples for the passive category <clears throat> so taking into account this kind of challenges so we developed uh, this approach where again we use open post and we uh, which was used to uh, detect recognize students and track them in the short video clips and uh, after that, we used uh, we developed the student engagement prediction model to predict the students' indiv individual engagement status. So as I said, it's a very challenging problem. So therefore, the out of box methods to detect recognize students and track them didn't work. And then we developed our own model for this particular uh, problem and then uh, we achieved a, a high accuracy, reliable accuracy, which was uh, allowed us to uh, actually move on to the next step, which is then detecting them, uh, which is the detecting of student engagement, as you can see here. 
And in particular, we interested in developing a technique to model again this group interaction dynamics, and uh, which can be useful, which is useful to detect uh, engagement student of students. And particularly, we are inspired for, uh, from a social LSTM model, where, which is originally proposed to forecast the path uh, of the uh, pedestrians. Uh, by taking into account their own trajectories, but as well as the trajectories of their neighbors. And uh, particularly, we uh, decide that our problem is also very different because we are not able to track how students are interacting, navigating in the physical space, but we are most in, uh, interested in the nonverbal cues gestures exchange between the students. Therefore, we have tried different architecture, but finally, or architecture is a bit different where we use individual LSTMs for each student. And then we use a different uh, layer, which is called team LSTM, which combines these uh, LSTMs from different students to predict finally the individual engagement students of, uh, of the students. And uh, we compared, so as, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's a very challenging computer vision problem. And uh, we uh, compared this team model, we call this team model, and uh, we compared it with a baseline model, where baseline model uh, did not take into consideration the interaction between the students, and we trained an LSTM uh, for each uh, student separately. And we observed that the team model was able to improve the uh, accuracy significantly, whereas, but we still observe that it was not uh, good at the problem, the team, even team model was not good at uh, predicting the passive status, and this is due to the uh, imbalanced uh, data problem, uh, but still this also gives some uh, implications, so implications actually, this kind of nonverbal behavior analysis can be used to develop uh, learning analytics tools to support teachers in this kind of scenarios. Uh, so uh, yes, yeah, so far I have talked about again poetic interactions and poetic interactions and the last thing that uh, work that I would like to talk about uh, whether for instance we can make robots uh, to uh, detect and analyze group in the social spaces like libraries or airports and for instance how we can have a robot can detect groups in crowds and how uh, detect the group formation type, which is called a formation, how robots can approach the groups in this scenario in a, a socially acceptable manner. So there is already, again, a, a line of work focusing on the, this problem, but the one of the limitations is uh, most of the works are focusing on top view cameras and fixed cameras, as you can see in these pictures. Uh, whereas uh, the robot's perspective, we would like to investigate the groups from a robot's perspective, from a first, pers uh, first person perspective. And there is no uh, data, there is no work focusing on this uh, particular problem. Uh, there are some two, two, uh, two recent works focusing on who also investigating, investigated group uh, behaviors from a robot's perspective, but as you can see, they are more uh, collected data in an outdoor uh, scenario where a group of people are uh, performing an activity, but we would like to also explore the group formation type, for example, a formation type. Therefore, we built uh, our own data set, which is called Robot Centric Indoor Growth Analysis data set, like a data set. And for this purpose, uh, we used our robot, which is a uh, Toyota's human support robot. And you here you can see the setting uh, that we collected, where it is a social gathering, which is participated by uh, 50 people. And there are many people, they are having a chat. And then, uh, as you can see, it's a very crowded environment. And uh, in this scenario, the uh, or robot navigated in this uh, area and then captured the interactions between the groups using its own onboard sensors. And we generated multimodal data, so RGB data, but as well as depth data and IMU data. And currently we are working on several uh, problems using this data set. 
because even the detecting humans is a challenging task on this data set. Also, we are focusing on how the two groups can be detected and also how a formation uh, can be detected in the setting, robo setting, uh, robo centric uh, setting. So this is an example. Uh, so so this says how it is different from a top view camera because the camera is dynamic here. There are many people. They are occluded and uh, the, uh, the the scene is changing uh, very quickly. And uh, we annotated this data set as a person levels. So we annotated each person, but also we annotated which group they belong to, as well as we uh, additional key annotators help us to annotate the group formation type, which is a formation. And based on the results so far, uh, the L arrangements uh, type of a formation is the most popular. And then the circle is the second one in this uh, particular uh, interaction scenario. So uh, of course, annotating this kind of uh, data set is very time consuming and challenging. And our goal is to develop unsupervised techniques uh, to detect groups uh, from a robust perspective, also the, uh, to, to recognize the information type. And so far, for instance, we focused on whether can we detect groups in an unsupervised manner from the robots perspective. For instance, uh, the method that we applied, for instance, as you can see here, an image uh, captured for, from robots perspective, and we ex uh, used some uh, off the shaft uh, human detector methods to detect individuals, and then which were then used to extract uh, some features from uh, these uh, individual uh, people, the individual individual uh, individuals, and which one we used a clustering technique, which is a governative hierarchical clustering technique. First, uh, it seems that that starts with single clusters and then gradually combines uh, these clusters. And finally, uh, we obtain a single cluster, as you can see, which gives this tree representation to us. And we also explore different linking, technology, uh, linking techniques uh, to this. Uh, clusters. And finally, after we uh, applied a threshold, as you can see, which a threshold based on the ratio uh, between the uh, between cluster dispersion as well as inter cluster uh, dispersion, which has us to which uh, resulted in the groups, as you can see here. So one of the things, one of the advantages of using uh, robot sensors, because we have depth information, which is not generally possible from top feed uh, cameras. And we found that using depth modality really significantly uh, improves the performance in this scenario for detecting groups. And we also uh, tried and compared different human uh, detection techniques. And for detecting groups, uh, focusing on the faces only, uh, is performing much better, perhaps because the body is uh, occluded uh, uh, in most cases in this scenario. So yeah, so so far I have uh, presented various approaches that we have developed so far to model human-human uh, interactions, but of course. Uh, one of the things that we are very much interested in how these models can be used again to, in the perception learning and control of human uh, humanoid robots. And in particular, in a few months, we have a project starting, which is particularly focusing on how robots can learn, act, uh, interact with humans by watching human human interaction videos only. And this is a very interesting. Uh, so we have a uh, very interested in this topic and we uh, hope to work in this area uh, much longer. And uh, finally, this is, as I said, this is uh, my research group and these are my PhD students and my collaborators. And also this was of, of course a teamwork and also I was thanks to this work was thanks to my master students and other grad uh, students as well. And yeah, Thank you so much. Uh, this is all I have got to say. If you have questions, I will be very happy to discuss 